Hello everyone! In this Python probability and statistics tutorial, we explain number one, how to create a normal distribution in Python, number two, how to plot a normal distribution in Python, number three, how to generate or draw random samples from a normal distribution in Python, and number four, how to generate a histogram graph of random samples in Python. The statistics tutorial is based on the SciPy Python library. In particular, we use the module called Stats from SciPy to generate a normal distribution. By the end of this video tutorial, you will learn how to generate, or better to say, how to draw samples from a normal distribution. Furthermore, you will learn how to generate this amazing graph. The blue line on this graph represents the probability density function of the normal distribution. This stairs looking shape in the background is actually a histogram plot of 200 random samples generated from the normal distribution. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial as well as more than 450 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. First, let's import the necessary libraries. First, we need the NumPy library. Then, from SciPy library, and SciPy is the Python scientific computing library, we will import stats. Stats is a module containing functions for performing statistics in Python. And finally, let's import the plotting function. From pyplot as plt. So import matplotlib.pyplot as plot. Okay. Perfect. Next, we will learn how to generate a normal distribution in Python. The normal distribution is mathematically represented by its probability density function given by this equation. In this equation, this parameter mu is the mean of the distribution. Sigma over here and over here is the standard deviation. Sigma squared given over here is the variance and x is the independent variable. Basically, the take-home message is that the normal distribution is actually defined by the mean and by the variance or by the standard deviation. Consequently, in Python, we need to define the mean and we need to define the variance. Let's define the mean. Mean value is equal to 5, for example. The standard deviation is equal to, for example, 5 also. So how to create a normal distribution? To create a normal distribution, from stats, we need to use this function norm. Norm is an abbreviation for normal. We need to specify two keywords. The first keyword is LOC, which is a short for location, and location is mean value. That is, the first keyword is the mean value. The second keyword is scale, and the scale is equal to the standard deviation. Okay, now the function norm actually returns a distribution object. I will call the distribution object simply as distribution. Perfect. Here's our distribution. It's just a norm. Next, let's learn how to generate the probability density function of the normal distribution. Let's define two points. The first point is defined like this. Start point is equal to distribution dot ppf. And over here, I will specify the percentile. This function, actually, ppf, is used to return the percentiles. That is the score for specific percentages. For example, let's start from 0.01. This is the start point of our distribution, and let's look into this point. Here it is. This is the score that corresponds to one percentile. The end point of our distribution on the x-axis 
will be distribution.ppf and over here I will specify 0 0.99 and here's the endpoint. Perfect. Next, let's create an array of x values. This array will be created by using numpy in space. We will start from the start point. We will go until the end point. And in between, let's say that we have 500 samples. Okay, so here are the x values from 1% percentile to 99% percentile. Perfect. Now, let's create the y values array that represents the value of the probability density function for the x values. Let's do that. We call again distribution and then we call the method PDF. PDF is short for probability density function and we specify the vector of x values. And here are the y values. Perfect. Next, let's learn how to generate a graph of the probability density function. Here's the piece of code that I wrote previously and that's used to generate the graph. First, we define the figure and we specify the figure size. Over here, we actually plot the row shape of our probability density function. We specify the x values, the y value, we specify the color and we specify the line width. Over here, I'm actually filling the surface between our curve, that is between our probability density function and the x-axis. I set the transparency factor to 0 0.2. I set the title over here. I set the x label, y label, as well as the font size. I set the tick parameters. Basically here I'm just increasing the font size on the x and y axis. Then I'm setting the grid. I'm setting the limits over here, x and y limits. I'm saving the figure in the file called normaldistribution.png such that you can include it in your student report or in your scientific paper. And finally I show the graph over here. Here's our distribution. Looks amazing. The next important thing that we need to learn is how to generate samples from our distribution. Let's learn how to do that. Let's specify the sample size. For example, let's draw 10 samples. Then, I will call the array of random samples as random samples. And this array is actually returned by this function distribution.rvs and over here I just need to specify size and the size is equal to sample size. Okay, so let's see our random samples. Here they are. Let's increase the sample size. For example, let's specify 200 samples over here and let's run the code again. Here they are. Perfect. Next, let's learn how to generate a histogram of random samples. Again, over here, I'm defining a figure and I'm setting the figure size. To generate the histogram, I'm calling the function hist. I'm specifying the random sample. I'm specifying the density is equal to true. Bins should be automatically determined. Histogram type is step filled and transparency 0 0.4. Let's change the transparency to 0 0.2. And the rest of the graph is the same as the previous graph used to generate the plot of the probability density function of the normal distribution. That is, I'm specifying x values, y values, I'm actually filling the surface. However, this part you don't need anymore. I'm setting the title and I'm setting other parameters. So let's see the result. Here it is. Here's the histogram of random samples together 
with the ideal graph of the normal distribution probability density function. Let's now play with this code by increasing the sample size. What happens if we set 1000? And let's run the code again. Aha, we can see that now the histogram better approximates the ideal graph of the probability density function. What happens if we have, for example, 10,000 samples? Let's see the graph. Wow, we can see that our histogram almost perfectly represents the probability density function of the normal distribution. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you liked this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.